Now I'm not going to bring the message today. We have our pastor, Brother John Bowling, with us today. Yes. Uh, all y'all met him. All we ain't met him. Let me see him. But all y'all are met him. But well, he's going to bring the message for us. And I want you to receive him by saying, Amen. Amen. Brother John Bowling. Amen. Thank you. Well, we thank God for you all coming out this morning. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> uh, today, we want to talk about how we're supposed to obtain the righteousness of God. A lot of people have their own way of trying to obtain it. But God gave us this word to go by. And it is the only way that we can obtain righteousness is we have to follow this word. So if you have your Bibles today, turn to the ninth chapter of Romans. Ninth chapter of Romans. We'll start reading at the twenty second verse. It reads What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering? the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory now let's think about his disciples just for a minute think about when Jesus came to this earth uh, to, to, to fulfill his ministry he didn't go to church people he went to people that were considered by society uh, uh, normal working class people because they didn't have all of that poisonous in them the Pharisees had a lot of poison in them and they had in their mind already how they were going to obtain righteousness they were trying to obtain it by the law so when Jesus Christ came on the scene he disturbed their program well, uh, uh, when the word of God go forth, it's, it's going to naturally disturb our traditions and what we think is what, what uh, is of God. Yeah. And so uh, this is what this is talking about. How, he, how he, uh, he, he, he made known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. The vessels Amen. were the disciples, the, the vessels of mercy. Amen. In other words, he had mercy on them. Now, when he first called his disciples, they weren't what they turned out to be in the end. When he first called them, you, you can read about each one of them just about. Every, every last one of them, Peter had a big mouth. He spoke before he thought, you know. All, the, all these men had shortcomings. Yes, but yes. God took pleasure in showing his mercy on them. Yes. Why? Because their heart was willing to receive the gospel. Yes. And it's that way today. God can't work with a bunch of Pharisees. No. And we still, and they still exist today. Yeah. He's looking for some people to show his mercy on. Yeah. Look at the uh, uh, Paul. How look at uh, Paul wrote about half of the New Testament. Mm-hmm. This is the same man that was going around uh, 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 helping to kill Christians. Yeah. He was a Pharisee, mm-hmm. but God showed his mercy through Paul. So we don't obtain righteousness by our works and, and coming to church every Sunday and because God don't want to hear about your self-righteousness. No, when you stand before the Lord on that day here, you can't read out a list of him of all the things you've done for him. No. Righteousness is by faith. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Verse 24 says, Even us whom he hath called 
not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Now right there, you know, Paul doesn't cross the line. Because all these years, for, for, for about 2,000 years, the, the called people of, Jesus, uh, of God were the Jews. They, they, it was born, you know, before they even knew it, they were keeping the law. They were circumcised. The, male, the males were circumcised on the eighth day. So before they even knew it, they were keeping the law. That, you know, that was the system that was set up. And so here Paul is saying, even us whom hath uh, he called not of Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. And he, as he said also in Osi, I will call them my people, which were not my people. And her beloved, which was not beloved. He's talking about the Gentiles. Amen. Now, I want to bring this in, in what this means today. God isn't calling. God isn't calling those people that's been sitting in church all their life. That's got a form of religion. That, that's really lukewarm and don't know it. He wants us to go. He, he wants those people who are down and out. Yeah. You see how that worked for the day? Amen. It's funny how we, we can look back on this and say, well, the Jews, they, they had pride. Mm -hmm. They thought they were the only ones that deserved the gospel. They thought they were the only ones that deserved the mercy of God. But we got that same attitude today right. in church. Yeah. We look down upon people that might not uh, uh, dress like we dress in church, that yeah. might not go to church every Sunday, might not even go to church at all. Right. And we look down upon them in our own self-righteousness. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thinking that our church is what's make, uh, uh, us going to church is what makes us righteous. Right. Or yes. us carrying, going to Bible study and all this other stuff. That doesn't make you righteous. No. God wants people with pure hearts. Yes. Now, I found in my ministry, uh, in the ministry that God had given me, rather, uh, it is easier to convert somebody that had nothing to do with church when they were growing up. It's easier to get them people than it is people that grew up in church. Their mama was in church on, on you know. <laughs> That's why it was easier for Jesus to, uh, for Paul to get the Gentiles. Because the Jews already had their mind made up. All right. Now we, we're talking about how to obtain righteousness now. Verse 26 says, And it shall come to pass that in, that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. And Esaias also cried concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. I wonder why he said that. They, millions of Jews but only a remnant shall be saved. Why is that? Because they already had their mind made up. We righteous because we're the children of Abraham. Well, when you stand before God on judgment day, you're not going to have Abraham on side of you vouching for you. You're going to have to live this life for yourself. And we're saying the same thing today. My mama helped found this church. <laughs> I'm a big part of it. Don't you sit in my seat. All right. Now this Bible is for us to look at today. Amen. These things go on today. Let's not look back on the on the Jews and the Pharisees and say what they did, because that's that that same spirit is still existing today. All right. We're talking about how to obtain righteousness now. Verse twenty-eight says, "For he will finish the work, and cut it short in righteousness." Because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Now what is that talking about? That's talking about what he did when he came here. Uh -huh. A short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Verse 29 says, And as Isaiah said before, Except the Lord of Sabaoth hath left us a seed, we had been as Sodom and, Gom and, and made like unto Gomorrah. Verse 30 says, What shall we say then, that the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? So these people, in other words, what he's saying is these people wasn't born uh, uh, following the law of Moses. Right. 
They didn't follow after that way, like what the Jews did. And it's that same way today. Some people aren't born, you know, aren't raised in church like many of us were. But God still have mercy on them. I've already said it's easier to convert somebody that has never been in church. Because you ain't got to convince them they ain't saved. It's these church folks you got to convince. You, you need to get saved. All right. <laughs> Verse 31 says, But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. <laughs> Wherefore, now what they're saying is, all their life they, they're following something, but they can't reach it. Because righteousness is by faith. They just feeling around in the dark. And, and the whole time they think they're right. And we got a bunch of church folks like that. They following something. But they ain't doing it with faith. They're not doing it with faith. Alright. Let's keep, let's keep reading here. So 32 says, Wherefore? Because they sought it not by faith. But as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at the stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, and whosoever believed on him shall not be ashamed. <laughs> now, if I, you know, stepped out, of, stepped out of this pulpit and walked around there, and I fell, it was, a, say, a brick there, and I fell, I'd be ashamed because I fell. It was a stumbling stone down there. Well, Jesus Christ is that stumbling stone. Yes. Now what is he talking about? He, he lay in Zion a stumbling stone. Amen. What does he mean? Well, think about it this way. For years, 2,000, 2000 or so years, the Israelites had the law of Moses. Amen. And they were used to doing things a certain way. 2,000 years. Now you think about us, you know, we might get used to doing our thing. We've only been here for a little bit. But for 2,000 years, it was put in them. Yeah. This is what you do, and God will accept you. Mm -hmm. Well, here come that stumbling stone, Jesus Christ. Amen. And he switches it up. I'm, I'm the fella that's going to get you. Because see, the whole time, they could never get to God for themselves. They, in other words, it, that, that work would never be finished. Every year they had to go and offer sacrifice. Yes. Every single year. Then when Jesus come, he was the final sacrifice. And the Pharisees had a problem with it. And the Pharisees today still had a problem with it. Now what am I talking about? I'm talking about people that's trying to obtain righteousness by keeping the law. If you're trying to keep the Sabbath day and you thinking that that's what make you righteous, Jesus Christ is your stumbling stone. If you think paying tithes is what's keeping you righteous and holy before the, God, before the Lord, every time you walk around and put your tithes in the offering plate, Jesus Christ is your stumbling stone. Why? Because you're not obtaining righteousness by faith. you watching yourself put that money in the offering plate. I'm talking about tithes now. you watching yourself keep the Sabbath day. Faith ain't something you can see. All right. <laughs> and so it says they shall not be ashamed. Now people that's paying tithes and keeping the Sabbath, they got their chest stuck out. Not knowing all along that the very thing that they think is making them righteous is what's going to condemn them on that day. Because you're trampling the cross and the blood of Christ under your foot. A stumbling stone. All right, let's start at verse at chapter 10 now. Verse 1 says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. <laughs> I'm going to read that again. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. That's a bold statement. Because Israel thought they was already saved. <laughs> they thought they were already saved. Because yeah. <laughs> according to them, they, they thought, well, we're keeping the law of Moses. We got Abraham to our father. We saved. We all right. 
<laughs> and we got people that's like that today. Now, Israel today is the church. And today that's saying, brethren, I would, my prayer to God is that the church world, rather, would be saved. Because most of the people that's in church is deceived. Now, we're talking about how to obtain righteousness. All right. God don't care about you, though. Know. You can't run down a list of God about what you've done for him. Faith. I ain't never seen Jesus Christ. I wasn't there when they crucified him. But I believe it by faith. That he took all of the Mosaic law and nailed it to the cross. I believe that. Now people will read this and they'll say, them people back then, they were messed up. When all along it's talking about you. All right. Now, all right, let's read verse 2. It says, For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. In other words, they got something within them. Every human being got something within them that knows that there's a higher power that we should be serving. You can go to a pagan country, uh, to these countries that serve all these different gods. They doing that because they know something in them. Because every everybody that's born, uh, 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 God wants them to be saved. And so God puts within them something that says there's a higher power that you're supposed to be worshiping. There's a higher power. In fact, let's let's look at Cain. Cain was doing offers just like his brother Abel was. Something within him said that there's a high power I'm supposed to be worshiping. Now let's read the second part of that verse. That, well, let's read it all together. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. No, they got a zeal of God. In other words, they, they know that there's something there. But not according to knowledge. In other words, they know that it's something that I'm supposed to be doing, but I don't. But they ain't got enough sense to know. I don't know how to do it. All right. And so what they do is they start searching out. They start worshiping the moon and the stars. Hmm. And and it's the same way today. I'm talking about in the church. I'm talking about in the church. We have a zeal of God. If we didn't, we wouldn't be sitting here. But are we serving God according to knowledge? All right. All right. Hmm. Well, let me, let me just give you this example. Let's say this Super Walmart down here. It's, you know, they all got different numbers to all of these stores. Let's say that this is store number one. And that's the only, and, and you know that there's, let's say, uh, you need to get a, a pack of uh, napkins at Walmart and that's the only store where you can get those napkins every other Walmart in this world is sold out of them and uh, uh, so you want to get there you don't know exactly where it is but you think in your mind well if I go out here and I stop at the stop sign and I just keep I just keep you know just keep circling just keep circling and eventually I find it well, you might not ever find it. Now, you can stop. You can stop at all the stop signs when you make your turn. You can put on your blinkers and all of that. In other words, you can keep the law. But that don't get you to Walmart. No. Keeping the law will never, ever lead you to Jesus Christ. No. This here is our road map. Yes, sir. If you want to get to Walmart, this is how you get there. Yes. You can save yourself a lot of trouble if you just obey the word of God. Because it'll get you to Jesus Christ every single time. Yeah. But what, what the problem is, is people are feeling around in the dark and they're trying to obtain righteousness, but they're not trying to do it through faith. Right. And, that's what's, and it's going to be a sad day when people stand before the Lord and say, Lord, I've been searching you out. I kept all the law. I put my blinkers on. I, I dotted all my I's and crossed all my T's. Did all of that. But that ain't never, that'll never, ever get you to Walmart. That'll never ever get you to Jesus Christ. Amen. Keeping the law, you don't obtain righteousness by keeping the law. This is talking to the people today. 
This is talking to people today. All right. Let's keep reading. Verse 3 says, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So in other words, they already got their mind made up. Amen. I'm going to serve God the way I want to serve him. Amen. I don't care what you got to say. I can hear from the Lord just like you can. <laughs> but they're ignorant and don't know it. So they're feeling around in the dark trying to establish their own righteousness. But not according to God. They haven't submitted themselves. <laughs> I don't care what you say. I'm going to serve God the way he, 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 get, he reveals stuff to me too. That's what they'll say. Yes. All right, let's keep reading. Verse 5 says, For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Verse 6 says, But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, Who shall ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, and even in thy mouth, and in thy heart. That is, the word of faith which we preached. Hmm. See how this faith is always coming up? You can't separate uh, faith from righteousness. You can't separate them two. You know, uh, for me, uh, to go out and get in my car and to go home, I first have to believe that when I get in my car and turn that ignition, it's going to start. I have to believe that first. For you to be perfect in the will of the Lord, you first have to believe that you can be that. You first have to believe that you can be that. Well, how do you be? It's faith. You have to have faith. I'm not going to give, you know, Brother Junior, my kid, say, go out and start that car. Let me see if it's going to start. Why? Because I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it then, you see. Yes. By faith, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to turn that ignition on. How many of y'all, when y'all came in here, y'all looked under those seats to see whether or not they was going to hold y'all? Nobody in here did that, did they? Isn't it funny how we have more faith in this stuff in here than we do in God? I mean, when you walk in a dark room and you hit that light switch, you expect for it to come on, don't you? And then when it don't come on, you, you think <laughs> something's wrong here. Well, that's how we should be about God when obtaining righteousness. All right, let's keep reading. <laughs> Verse 9 says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. All right. So there's a whole lot of people confessing with their mouth. They got the first part down. They can walk around, quote all the promised scriptures. They can do all of that. They can, they can confess a bunch of stuff with their mouth. But you got to believe with your heart. You got to believe with your heart. Amen. Amen. All right, verse, verse 10 says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. That's the only way. That's the only way. <laughs> and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever uh, uh, believed on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is, is, is rich unto all that call upon him. Unto all that call upon him. God doesn't have respect to persons. We might have it, but he doesn't. God wants the people out there in the streets that's on drugs and all that. They, he wants them saved just like he wants you saved. But it's going to be harder to get to you because you're in here. And you already think you're saved. All right. I don't want nobody to take that personal now. <laughs> All right, verse 14 says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? 
And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? You know, so many people try to get around that scripture. How can you hear by, without a preacher? That's some people that say, well, I don't, I don't need to go to church. I can just read the Bible and get my own revelation. When all along it's the devil talking in your ear. The devil got a revelation too. And it'll take you straight to hell. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Now, verse 15 says, And how shall they preach except they be sent? Now, a whole bunch of people stumble at this scripture. It's a whole bunch of people preaching. But probably less than half of them sent. They take it upon themselves. If you want to know if a preacher is called to preach, you just listen to what he got to say. Amen. But you have to know the word for yourself. Yes, you do. You have to have the spirit of truth in you. Yes, so Amen. when you hear something that ain't matching up, something's going to say, wait a minute. Yes. That, don't, that don't sound right. right. But what we got going on today is the blind is leading the blind. Blind preachers in the pulpit telling you the way you obtain righteousness is by keeping the law. And you got and 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 they falling in a ditch and you got a bunch of other people falling with them because they they ain't read the Bible for themselves and have the spirit of truth to be able to discern that. All right. We talking about how to obtain righteousness now. In the last part of that verse says, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? Hmm. So, in other words, well, let's keep reading that. It says, But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily. Their sound went into all uh, the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. So in other words, they all heard the gospel. We all, everybody in here, if you sat on the Brother Junior, you've heard the gospel. Amen. You're going to be without excuse. Yes. But are you obeying the gospel? Amen. Are you obeying the gospel? Israel, they, Jesus Christ was sent to them. Amen. Now we read earlier, and they they're numbered at the, as, the, as the sands of the sea. Yes. But only a remnant is going to be saved. A whole lot of people sitting in church. But only a remnant of those people are going to be saved. Because everybody ain't nothing. Now, we, we hear the gospel, but we're not obeying it. Amen. We're hearers of the word and not doers. All right. Yeah. All right. Verse 17 says, So then faith come by singing. Is that what it says? <laughs> I've been in churches. Well, they could do they can do praise and worship five and six hours. Then when the preacher get up to preach, they're looking at their watch. When Jesus was on his earth, he didn't tell his disciples to go sing the gospel. I don't care how good you can sing. Salvation ain't in singing. No, now I like singing just like everybody else. Yeah. But if the devil can keep you singing and keep you from uh, from this word, you don't have to worry about getting faith. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yeah. It don't come by singing. No. So that's a trick of the enemy. Yeah. The devil, he'll keep you singing. Yeah, he as long as that word ain't coming for <laughs> All right. <laughs> Verse 18 says, But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. Verse 19 says, But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. In other words, that, now that's talking about that's talking about the Gentiles. It's talking about the Gentiles. They were provoked to jealousy. Every time Jesus did something, the Pharisees were standing right there, pointing their finger at him. 
Why? Because they knew that the Gentiles were standing around looking, and their hearts weren't right. They didn't care nothing about Jesus healing people. All they cared about was he come to mess up their little program. <coughs> and, that, and that's the same way today. It's that same way today. We don't want to be disturbed. I want to sing my four and five songs. I want to get my testimony in. <laughs> but when the Holy Ghost want to do something different. <laughs> I said last week, we can't put God on our schedule. No. All right. <laughs> Verse 20 says, But Esaias is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that would ask, that ask not after me. Hmm. Let me read that again. But Esaias is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. Now last week, uh, oh, actually uh, Tuesday, when I, right before I came to Bible study, I went to, my, went to see my nephew up there in, in the hospital. And uh, while I, as I was walking in, this guy passed by me. And uh, I knew it was something funny, you know, something strange about him, just something, something different about him. And he spoke and I spoke back. And uh, after I got done visiting, I came back outside, going to the car, and uh, passed by him again. He spoke, and I spoke again back, and uh, kept walking. I kept walking. He said, wait a minute. And I turned around and looked. He said, you're a preacher, ain't you? And I said, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm on my way to church right now. I'm a, I'm a preacher. And uh, he said, man, I'm just so happy. I got the joy of the Lord in me. And he went on to tell me his testimony. And he didn't look like a fella that was churchy. You know how we got our look. We, you know, you can tell church folks. <laughs> he didn't look that way. Dirty jeans, dirty shirt. But the Lord loved him just like he loved us. And he went on telling me his testimony. And he said, man, you just don't know. He said, if I had known 20 years ago, that serving the Lord was this joyous, I'd have been done it. He said, I just got saved three weeks ago. He said, I, he said and, and that same week, I was uh, making plans on how I was going to rob a couple of banks here in town. I didn't have no food in my refrigerator, no clothes. My, I got a family that needed to eat. And I was making plans on how I was going to rob a bank. And something told me to go to church. Well, see, those are the people that God takes joy in yes. reaching down yes, and picking up. Yes, because those people, it's easy to reach those people. Yes. And we're talking about how to obtain righteousness. Amen. By faith, this fella grabbed the hold of God Amen. and obtained his righteousness. Yes, and God takes joy. And taking the worst of sinners. Yes. And, and, and turning them into righteousness. Yes. He can't do nothing with a bunch of stiff-necked Pharisees. Amen. Now we, I'm, we, we need to examine ourselves. Because there's a thin line between self-righteousness and faith. Amen. Are we obtaining righteousness by faith? Huh. Or are we doing it by what, we, what we've done? I pray three times a day. I read the Bible. I do all of this. I do all of that. That's not, that, that's not how you get righteousness. God don't care about your, you having a star by your name. <laughs> righteousness by faith. Alright, verse 21 says, But to Israel he said, All day long, I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. And he's saying that to the church today. All day long, I stretched forth my hands to the church. Well, I should say to the church world. But are we, are we grabbing a hold of it by faith? 
are we going to reject the gospel of Jesus Christ and try to work out our own righteousness? Don't be deceived. Righteousness come by faith. And, only, and this says that we, the faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. All right, let's pray.